Heat advisories are now in effect for millions of Americans as temperatures reach past 100 degrees and are expected from the southwest all the way to Miami, Florida. More severe storms also expected in the Plain states. Well, the extreme heat is having major implications for everyone on planet Earth. That's right. As we previously reported, the unofficial hottest day on the planet was recorded earlier this week. And the rising temperatures are causing growing concerns over the long-term effects now of climate change. Chris Field, the director of the Sanford Woods Institute for the Environment, joins us now. Chris, thanks so much for being with us. I want to ask... My pleasure. Thank you. First off, what is driving this? We know climate change is playing a big role but if you can explain a little more about what's driving this rise in temperatures. So these global records are really driven by three things. One is the rising temperatures that are caused by global warming, a result of human emissions of heat trapping gases. The second is we've recently transitioned into El Nino conditions, a state of the Pacific Ocean that makes the ocean less capable of taking up heat, leaves more in the atmosphere. And the third is that it's summertime and it's always hot in the Northern Hemisphere summer. Those three factors added together mean we're seeing global record high temperatures. The high temperature set, the record set on Monday was broken Tuesday and it was tied again on Wednesday. This is one of those moments, um, Chris, where I get concerned that we just as humans have a real collective action problem because it was 20 years ago at the IPCC that the UN's kind of climate change body was, was sounding the alarm about the rising global temperatures and the expectation, and it's all happening as predicted, uh, but yet here we are, humans still actively playing a role somewhat in the changing temperature. Just tell me specifically what role we do play in what's happening and how much power we have to reverse it, if at all by now. A great question. Essentially, all the warming we've seen in the last century is a result of human emissions release of these heat trapping gases to the atmosphere. And unfortunately, the emissions are still going up, even though we've made really dramatic progress in the price of renewables and the reliability and attractiveness of electric vehicles. We just need to do the same things that we're doing faster and better. We can solve this problem. We know the cause and we know how to deploy the solutions. And we're seeing some progress. We're just not seeing progress that's fast enough. And I want to ask about that because the situation looks very dire. But is it possible not just to stop what's happening to our planet, but reverse some of these effects and ultimately cool some of these rising temperatures? It is possible. We need to do two things. First, we need to bring the emissions of these heat trapping gases down to zero. This is heat trapping gases released by electricity production, by manufacturing, by uh, buildings, by transportation and by agriculture. And then we need to be removing greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, including planting more forests, taking better care of, of grassland and agricultural soils and building up the carbon stock in land and ocean ecosystems, removing carbon from the atmosphere and cooling the climate. Take that advice and run with it. Hey, also take a bike, ride the bike every now and then. You know, if you're not driving, I don't know if you, you ride bikes, Chris, do you ride bikes? I work, I ride to work every day. There we go. Right. You heard it from him first. Uh, Chris Field, thanks for joining us today thanks. and discussing this. My pleasure, stay cool.